Tonight in COVID conversations, while many people can recover from the coronavirus without any problems, there is a small percentage of patients who can experience long-term symptoms months after their initial diagnosis. Federal officials are now taking a very serious look at this condition. And joining us tonight to talk more about this is Dr. Lakshmi Santosh. She's the founder of UCSF's Post-COVID Optimal Clinic. Uh, doctor, really good of you to come on here to talk about this issue. So, so first, uh, lay this out here. What are the most common lingering symptoms that COVID patients might suffer with and just how severe can they be? Thanks for having me. So the most common conditions that we see, which is supported by a lot of research studies really from around the world, are three big things. Persistent shortness of breath, fatigue, feeling really tired, and chest pain. Some people can even have other symptoms that persist. In our clinic, we do a comprehensive evaluation looking at lung symptoms, physical function issues, neurological or brain function issues, and mental health issues. And so people can really have so, issues in any of those organ systems. So what is, what is done to, to treat these patients who, who continue to suffer with, with the symptoms of COVID-19? And, and how, how long are their recoveries going to take? Or you know, are they ever going to fully recover? It's a really good question. As you mentioned, the NIH last week had a workshop, a two-day workshop for me and clinicians from around the world to investigate this more. For a lot of people, the symptoms may start off and actually get better over time, over the first couple of weeks to a couple of months. For some people, we are seeing this prolonged protracted course, and it's often quite hard to predict. So I've seen people in my work in the intensive care unit who are on death's door, you know, on a ventilator with severely high settings, and they actually turn out remarkably unscathed. And I've seen other people who were never hospitalized even who still have persistent issues afterwards. So it's so hard to predict, and that's part of what the research is looking at. Yeah, I mean, that sort of leads into my next question. I mean, it sounds like there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to, to who is likely to, to suffer the, the long-term effects and, and these lingering issues from, from COVID-19, but is, is there any indication of uh, some sort of a common thread in all of these patients? It's a really good question. So a lot of what we're doing is applying knowledge from other disease processes or other severe illnesses like sepsis. What happens when people who are in the ICU ill with something else and we look at how they recover from say a severe pneumonia. So we're applying a lot of that old knowledge to what we know now. So we know that if you're previously have a lot of health conditions are a bit older and frailer, it may take longer to recover. But we're also seeing with this pandemic that even young, previously healthy people can have issues long term as well. So there's a, still a lot to learn. There's a lot of uncertainty, which I know can be really frustrating for patients. And so we definitely acknowledge yeah. that. And researchers are working at a breakneck speed at UCSF and around the world to try to figure out what is the underlying process that causes these persistent symptoms long after the acute infection has passed. Yeah, I mean, even tonight, as we obviously talk about the, the fantastic news on the vaccine front, sort of uh, the beginning of the end, we hope, uh, to this pandemic, it sounds like, you know, we talk about waves here with this disease, and it sounds like we, we are going to have uh, another wave of folks who are going to suffer with these symptoms uh, maybe long after the pandemic has finished, it sounds like. That's exactly right, that we have to prepare. I think we've done a good job of preparing our hospitals, our intensive care units, our emergency rooms for this acute surges. And at the same time in parallel, we have to prepare our outpatient clinics for kind of perhaps a chronic disease management model to take care of people who may have lingering effects even afterwards. Really appreciate you coming on tonight uh, and appreciate your insight on, on the subject here. Uh, such an important one uh, for so many people. Dr. Lakshmi Santosh, founder of UCSF's Post-COVID Optimal Clinic. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for having me.